Welcome back to the second part of the history of women's body ideals. Meet the Gibson Girl, the popular image of feminine beauty and fashion at the turn of the century. She was created by the illustrator Charles Dana Gibson during the late 19th century, combining elements of female beauty like the fragile lady and the voluptuous woman. The Gibson girl was characterized by a tall, slender figure with a small waist, long neck, and slightly oversized hair arranged in a loose, upswept style. She was often depicted wearing high collars, long skirts, and flowing blouses. The Gibson girl was seen as a symbol of a new, independent woman who was educated, athletic, and socially aware. She was also seen as a fashion trendsetter, with many women imitating her style and demeanor. The Gibson girl became the quintessential image of the fashionable modern woman of that era, and women would try their hardest to mirror the classy, empowered symbol. But let's not forget that this was again a man's drawing and not a real woman. So just like previous eras, women were seen through men's lenses. The 1920s, yes, the Roaring Twenties. Now, the Twenties were, in a sense, an act of rebellion against the more feminine figure sought after in previous years. Women wanted slim, small frames with no curves, styling short hair and shorter hemlines. In this time period, the ideal woman had flat chest, downplayed waist, short bob hairstyle, boyish figure. Beauty in the 1920s featured an androgynous look for women. They wore bras that flattened their chest and wore clothing that gave them a curveless look. The flapper became the iconic image of the roaring 20s woman. Flappers were young, fashionable women who defied social norms by wearing short skirts, bobbing their hair, and applying makeup in public. Oh, can you imagine? They smoked cigarettes, drank alcohol, and danced to jazz music in illegal drinking establishments that sprang up during prohibition, breaking the law and living on the edge. Women also gained more freedom in the workplace during the 1920s. They worked as secretaries, clerks, and telephone operators, and some became professionals in fields such as medicine, law, and journalism. In the United States, women got the right to vote in 1920, which led to increased political participation and activism. Women also played important roles in the cultural movements of the Roaring Twenties. They were at the forefront of the Harlem Renaissance, a cultural movement that celebrated African-American arts and culture. Women writers such as Zora Neale Hurston and Nella Larson became prominent figures in the movement while performers such as Josephine Baker and Bessie Smith gained fame for their music and dance. Due to the invention of bathroom scales in 1970 and the rise of department stores with full-length mirrors, an obsession over women's body types was ignited and fueled even further. This is the time when our serious modern obsession with weight began. Women of the Roaring Twenties represented a new era of freedom, creativity, and rebellion against traditional values. They paved the way for future generations of women to achieve greater equality and opportunity. Let's move on to the glamorous Hollywood era between 1930s and 1950s. During the Great Depression that followed the 20s and the Second World War, people couldn't afford to worry as much about their fear. I mean, come on, let's be serious. However, after this period ended, the hourglass figure made its peak, with bigger breasts, white hips, and a slim waist becoming popular once again. Hilda, are you decent? Me? Sure, I'm decent. This was the influence of Hollywood, which promoted the voluptuous and glamorous sex symbols of the time like Rita Hayworth, Lena Turner, and of course, the one and only Marilyn Monroe, the golden girl of Hollywood. 
You're Mr. Franklin, aren't you? Yes. Are you enjoying your trip? Oh. How many times have you crossed? This is my, uh... Third... Don't you feel alone out on a big ocean? Well, I, uh... I just adore conversation, don't you? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Pardon, monsieur. Mademoiselle, Mr. Stafford is here. Oh, Dorothy. Pardon me for whispering. Now, please try to make a good impression. Okay. Right this way, sir. Mr. Henry Spafford. Hello. 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 Keep in mind that TV ads became very popular in the 50s as the unique selling point tactic was coined, which meant that advertisers would create a catchy phrase about their product, like a motto that was repeated over and over and over again across all media. This is when true advertising was born, but also building up the gigantic beauty industry as we know it today, which very often relies on women's insecurities. One important reason, nothing else so easily turns a plain woman into a beautiful woman. And nothing else does so much to make you attractive as beautiful eyes. But the most important reason of all, your eyes are your most precious possession. While the hourglass figure was the ideal, not all women could achieve it, and some were criticized for not fitting the beauty standards of the time. Sounds familiar? Oh yes indeed. The ideal body type of the 1950s reflected the cultural values of the time, which placed a high value on femininity, beauty, and glamour. Thank you for watching part two of the history of women's body ideals. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more fun facts and inspirational videos. And join me next week when we will talk about the swinging 60s and all the decades up to the present day. Don't forget that your body is right.